This is Dave Kazmarek. Welcome back to So You Can Text, But Can You Write? Now into the next section. Rule number six is looking at your spelling and being careful with spelling and being very careful about using spell check. Spell check is a great thing. I use it all the time. Matter of fact, we won't let a deck go out unless people have used spell check because you will pick things up. But spell check does not pick up everything. There's lots of times when you will put in a correctly spelled word, but that word just doesn't fit in the document that you're writing. Things like two or two, T-O versus T-O-O. You may want the one, you put the other one in by mistake. Or and of are frequently put in incorrectly. For some reason, when you're typing, it's so easy to do that. You have there and there, T-H-E-I-R, which is the possessive versus T-H-E-R-E. You get the idea, except or accept, that, than, is, it. All of those things are correctly spelled words, but they often are in the wrong place. Rule number seven is making sure that you're using the correct word based on what it means. There is a thing called a dictionary. If you're using a tablet, you probably have a dictionary app. It's really important to go through and look at those words and make sure that you are using the right word at the right time. Rule number eight goes into punctuation. This is one of my favorite areas, also one of the ones that I see mistakes in more often than not. If you are having a good time with punctuation, if you you like this, there's a book out there called Eats, Shoots, and Leaves by Lynn Truss, T-R-U-S-S. I really suggest you pick this up. It's a fun read, but it will teach you about punctuation. The two biggest errors that we're going to find in punctuation are generally commas and possessives. Commas are used primarily to offset phrases and to separate words in lists. Probably the easiest way to think about the correct use of a comma when it comes to offsetting phrases is, do we pause when we're saying something? When the project begins, we will require the contractor to provide us with the necessary items. Did you hear how you pause after when the project begins? It's a perfect place for a comma. We can, with mutual consent, change the contract term. Again, with mutual consent is a phrase within the sentence and often will be offset by commas. The other place that we use it a lot is when we have a list of items. So we're going to see item one, item two, item three, and item four. Now, there's often some confusion about that list of items and when you use a comma. So obviously, you're going to use it between one and two, between two and three. But do you use it before the and? And the answer to that is it's optional. You can use it or not use it. But, and the big but is, you really need to be consistent. So if you're going to use it before the and, use it all the time. If you're not going to use it before the and, don't use it ever. I find it easier to use it and use it consistently, and then there's never an error. The other thing that uh, where you use a comma, and there's often a mistake here where people use commas way too often, is between two complete sentences that don't have a period. I am going to the bank, and I'm going to withdraw money. So you have a subject and a verb, you have a subject and a verb. You would use a comma between those two. But if you said, I'm going to the bank and taking out money, that's not a full sentence. And taking out money is not a full sentence. You don't have a subject for that verb. You would not use a comma there. It's interesting how a comma can change a sentence. Think about the sign, slow, children crossing. But without that comma, it's slow children crossing. The children who are slow are crossing. One of my favorites is think about how punctuation changes this phrase. A woman without her man is nothing. Now, ladies, don't get upset about that because all you have to do is put a colon after woman 
and a comma after her. And what you get is a woman without her, man is nothing. Same sentence, same words, whole different meaning. Apostrophes are used primarily to indicate possession and for word contractions. Contractions are where you take two words and you put them into one. Do not becomes doesn't. Are not becomes aren't. So there's a lot of those different things. Could have becomes could have. We use an apostrophe to indicate those letters that have been taken out. We also use the apostrophe to indicate possession. So this is the man's item, M-A-N apostrophe S. The apostrophe, if it goes before the S or after the S, the before the S apostrophe indicates a singular, the after the S apostrophe indicates a plural. The man's is not a good example because man is, uh, the plural of man is men, but the participant's item, participant apostrophe S, indicates a single participant, participant S apostrophe indicates lots of participants. The common misuse of the apostrophe is when we're making a, an acronym plural. So things like GPO. If you're going to make GPO plural, you'd have capital G, capital P, capital O, S. You would not use apostrophe S. Rule number nine is another one of my favorites, which is capital letters. Boy, if you want to find one thing that's inappropriate and done inconsistently in, in many writing, particularly PowerPoint decks, all you have to look for is capitalization. So here's the rules with regard to capitalization. You always capitalize the first word of a sentence. This is a full sentence. The T in this would be capitalized. You always capitalize proper nouns. These would include names, titles, countries. You capitalize the I when you're referring to yourself. It feels good when I take a walk, that I is capital. And you capitalize the days of the week and the months of the year. Monday, January 1st, both of those would be capitalized. That's it. We don't capitalize other stuff. And you don't capitalize job titles. You don't capitalize generally uh, department names. But uh, we have a habit of really doing those kinds of things. The other rule with regard to capitalization is in titles. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do it. The three most common are a title would be all capitals. A title would have capitalization of each word, except for a couple ones like articles and coordinating conjunctions, or capitalizing only the first word of a title. Again, the consistency is the issue here. You want to make sure that your titles are all capitalized the same way or each sub item would be capitalized the same way. So your main title may be all caps. Your second bullet might be first word only. Just be consistent. And finally, rule number 10, for important documents, always review. Go over it again, go back to it later, go back to the next day, get somebody else to review it, it is just so, so easy to look at something and not see the obvious in front of it. And the graphic says, what I if told you, you misread the first line. And even now when I look at that, my mind flips those two words around. And what my mind sees is, what if I told you? But what it actually says is, what I if told you. It's so easy to see that, so easy to make the mistake. So that's the 10 rules to live by. Less is more. Don't use two words when one will do. Keep your writing simple. Avoid words and phrases you would not use in conversation. Use simple sentence construction. Use active rather than passive language. Always review, reread after making changes. Don't ignore spell check, but don't rely only on spell check to catch errors. Use a dictionary on words whose meaning you are not 100% sure of. 
Use punctuation appropriately. Don't capitalize indiscriminately and review the documents. We hope you take this to heart. We hope that your documents look better. We hope that you gain respect through your writing going forward. This is Dave Kaczmarek. Thanks for participating.